Tonight, Twitter revenue and stock take a big bounce. China's monopoly investigation of Microsoft and Instagram soft launches Bolt. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 139 for Tuesday, July 29th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by Nature Box. Order great tasting, healthy snacks delivered right to your door. Forget the vending machine and get in shape with healthy, delicious treats like baked cheddar potato fries. I would like some. To get 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash twit. Hi, everyone. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed. Twitter reported its second quarter financial performance today, which had shareholders dancing in the streets, I think. Revenue of $312 million and earnings per share of two cents were well above what analysts had expected. A loss of a penny per share on revenue of $283.07 million. Revenue was also up, up way up, 124% from the year ago period. And 81% of Twitter's ad revenue came from mobile advertising. The company reports it now has 271 million monthly active users, which is also up 24% year over year. And after hours trading, the stock was up almost 30%. There is a party going on somewhere. China has opened an anti-monopoly probe into Microsoft over the company's Windows and Office software after conducting surprise raids of the company's China offices yesterday. China's State Administration for Industry and Commerce has been investigating Microsoft since an industry complaint back in June of 2013 alleged that Windows and Office are not fully open, resulting in compatibility and bundling and document verification issues. Copies were taken off of Microsoft contracts and financial statements, along with PC and server storage containing internal emails. The China market is a big one for Microsoft. The Windows OS is the top operating system in the country. However, back in May, a Chinese government agency began banning purchases of Windows 8 systems, Microsoft ending official support for Windows XP, which exposed that OS to security risks, has been cited as at least one reason by China's state-controlled press. As expected, today, U.S. Senator Patrick Leahy introduced legislation, the USA Freedom Act, to ban the government's bulk collection of Americans' telephone records and Internet data and limit how much information it can seek in a search. The bill has White House backing, and it goes further than a version passed back in May by the U.S. House of Representatives in reducing bulk collection. Congress leaves for a five-week break this Friday. It's a little unclear at this point if lawmakers are going to be able to address the legislation legislation rather before November elections, but the bill would end the bulk business records collection of phone records authorized by Section 215 of the USA Patriot Act and instead would authorize searches for call records two hops from a search term and then limit the types of search terms themselves. The, rec the records indicate connections and durations of calls but do not include specific content. Inspur Group, have you heard of this company? It's a Chinese company that once made computer accessories, is seeking to rival IBM as a top provider of computer servers uh, company in China. It's kind of thanking Edward Snowden for this as well. Since the worldwide national security agency controversy began, Inspur, which started out way back in the 1960s making computer accessories, has seen its domestic server sales soar, overtaking Dell, China's own Huawei, and HP in the first quarter to top China's charts for server shipments, according to data from Gartner. The boom in China has also lifted Inspur to the number five spot globally. U.S. vendors Dell, HP, and IBM have all seen market share declines in China and globally as well. The tide is turning. Shared car service Uber has focused up until now on giving rides to consumers, civilians. But the company recognizes that many rides are work-related. So a new feature called Uber for Business will let employees bill their Uber trips directly to their company. A centralized billing system sends trip details back to people or departments at that company so that the employee doesn't have to collect receipts anymore. For employees who already have Uber accounts, an option to join a work account pops up on their private account and that company says that users will be able to easily toggle between work and personal payment options. So business travel is automatically expensed and personal trips stay separate.
Coming up, Flickr wants to make your photos something to be discovered and give you money. And next, I'll chat with Josh Ong from The Next Web about Instagram's new photo sharing app, Bolt. It is a reality. But first, we all like to snack. So let's talk about snacks. We're, we're snacking probably more than we should these days. Why not, though? When you get hungry, the dip in the afternoon, this happens to me right before this show, you snack on something that's really good for you from Nature Box. Nature Box snacks have zero trans fats, zero high fructose corn syrup, nothing artificial at all. The company will send great tasting snacks right to your door. They've got free shipping anywhere inside the U.S. And what you do is you go to naturebox.com and then click on the continue button and you choose from three subscription options. When you've found the one you want, you place your order. And then once you're a member, you select which snacks you like in your monthly box. Sweet, savory, you've got all sorts of options. You can also select by dietary needs and, you know, by taste. The next time you get hungry and you want to eat something that's bad for you, remember Nature Box, because if you have that next to you, you're going to make better decisions. Honey Dijon pretzels, blueberry nom noms. I know it sounds silly, but man, they're good. Over 100 more healthy snacks. We love them around the Twit office, and we think you will too. To get 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash twit, and thanks to Nature Box for their support of Tech News Tonight. All right, joining us now is Josh Ong, U.S. Editor at The Next Web. Hello, Josh. Hey, Sarah. How you doing? Pretty good. Good. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, so you wrote an article today uh, that Instagram is preparing to launch its Bolt messaging app, but outside the U.S., only in three countries. Why do you think that that is? Yeah, it's odd. It's kind of a non-launch. Um, so the three countries are Singapore, New Zealand, and South Africa. And they're not really the first three that would come to mind if you were thinking of a launch. Yeah, but, they're um, not. But they're, they're small markets. I mean relatively small compared to something like the U.S. or U.K. Uh, and, you know, they're English speaking and they give a real a chance for, according to Instagram, a chance to make sure that the app can scale um, and the experience can, can stay great. Um, so that's what they're saying. I think if you look at the app, it's, it's based on your phone number. It's not based on your Instagram account or your Facebook account. And I think that's, that's really interesting because that requires a certain kind of um, more regional or geographic focus in the sense that, um, you know, the phone numbers around you, we don't necessarily have phone numbers for just in our phones stored for the people who are, you know, in other countries. Um, so, so I think it, it's in that sense, trying to capture how does this app work within these pockets of communities um, in these different countries. And then as that, um, as they can model that and get a sense for um, how to, make sure that everything stays online. Um, hopefully, we'll start seeing that in the U.S. and other countries. Okay, well, what what it sounds like uh, Facebook is doing with Bolt, Instagram is doing with Bolt, it sounds a lot like Tap Talk, which uh, we haven't talked about too much on TNT, but it's it's extremely popular. Snapchat, it's, it's is this it's sort of an inev inevitable, okay, Facebook wants to see if this is going to stick at all. Why not start in a smaller market so that if it fails, there's less attention on it? Sure. Yeah, Facebook has that approach with apps. Is they'll just throw stuff out there, things like Poke, which was kind of a joke app, but but was an early attempt at copying the Snapchat user behavior. Um, and they've got now they've got like Paper and Slingshot. They're just throwing out apps all the time. Um, and I think for Facebook, um, their business model, their commitment to investors, really relies on them being the the hub of social interaction online. Um, and so whenever someone gets a reasonable amount of traction, Facebook will either try and buy them or they'll try and copy them. And, and I mean, that's kind of the unfortunate reality. Um, they did that with WhatsApp, you know, and they, they paid a, a nice price for it. Um, and, you know, the rumors say that they tried to do that with Snapchat. They wanted to buy it early on and Snapchat felt confident that they could do, go it on their own. Um, and so, uh, so now they're trying again. I, I mean, Instagram is, you know, under Facebook. Um, and it's kind of a weird chain. You know, you have Facebook and they have Slingshot. And now you've got Instagram and, and now they have uh, Bolt. So it's confusing for the user, I think. You're kind of like, well, how am I supposed to use this? Who am I supposed to use it with? And how is this different from, say, Instagram Direct, which was the, you know, the photo messaging service that they added into Instagram 
you know, earlier. Well, so. that was going to be my next question, Josh, is if Facebook is, has, has had Facebook Messenger, let's say, as a, as a good example of a, of a spinoff app that, that works pretty well, but, it, but the company is now going to force users to, to use Facebook, at least mobile users, to use Facebook, and then the Messenger app, two different experiences. Does this point to Instagram Direct, which is where I could send you a private uh, photo message and we could have a conversation about it outside of our feeds, does this indicate that that's not working? I think it, it does to some extent. I think Instagram Direct doesn't quite fill what Bolt is trying to replace. I mean, it's a little bit more um, complicated. And I think Instagram must have realized that the whole conceit for Instagram itself is so specific and in some ways fussy in terms of like the metaphor that they're trying to use and the specific type of interaction that they want you to have on that platform that trying to force the um, that private messaging into that app didn't really work. Um, I haven't seen the numbers, obviously. Maybe they're getting tons of interaction on it. But, but I think the fact that Bolt is here and part of the Instagram brand suggests that there was an issue and um, and that they had to try and come up with a different way to approach this. Mm -hmm. At least have the feature somewhere somewhere else that people will use it. We mentioned on the show yesterday there was a little controversy over the name Bolt. The, the, the app Bolt is actually a, uh, it's a mobile uh, audio app, I believe. And the, uh, the developer of that app publicly wrote a blog post yesterday saying, please don't do this, Facebook, because I don't want to take you to court. Do you think Facebook cares at all? I mean, they probably have more money than, than the smaller app company does. Yeah, I mean, I think they, I'd hope they care. They're, they're people, too. I mean, they're a corporation, but they're made up of hopefully people with hearts. People understand that they don't want their own brands diluted and, um, you know, don't want the trouble that comes with a lawsuit. Um, but I, I think you see these kind of big companies start to push around the startups. Um, and, you know, coming up with a name for a new app, it's really difficult because App Store Discovery is so uh, atrocious right now. Yeah, it almost that, says more about um, bad App Store Discovery, doesn't it, than, 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 than two apps that have similar names because it's the user who's certain. confused. Yeah, and there, there are so many apps out there that, you pick any name, especially like a, you know, a short word that really has that kind of nice, um, clear association with like some kind of object, right? Um, or verb or whatever it's going to be. Um, it's taken. And you can resort to like some kind of weird spelling, you know, but even that, I mean, that's suboptimal, right? So, I mean, I think we're going to have to see this hashed out. Um, you know, Facebook may have to kind of pay off bolts and, you know, give them something to appease them. Um, but I'd love to see companies have a little bit more respect in this regard. Um, and I understand the need to kind of like launch, you know, and, you know, Apple with the iPhone had to buy it. I think it was from Cisco or something. You had to end up go, go back and like buy that trademark. Um, but they launched first because they didn't want people, you, you can't really start talking about having those discussions without it getting out that you're building something that is supposed to be secret. So, um, I think long term, Facebook, if they're just going to keep throwing apps out there, you know, they did paper, which is kind of like one of the most generic things. Um, they're they're going to need to find a way to interact with the smaller independent community on some of these names that maybe have uh, already been around for a few years now or, you know, months at least. Um, so I think we should all kind of hope for and call on Facebook to, to, to be the, you know, better in this situation. Josh Ong is the U.S. editor over at The Next Web. Thanks for coming back on the show, Josh, and let people know where they can keep up with articles like these. Yeah, thanks for having me. So hit us up at thenextweb.com, and I'm on Twitter at Beijing Do D-O-U. Thanks, thanks, Josh. See ya. All right, finally, if you're still using the photo storage and sharing site Flickr, I am. I still love it. How about making a little bit of money off of your sets and collections? Flickr has announced a new licensing program for the services members who are looking to have their work discovered and featured on news sites, including Yahoo, of course, the parent company of Flickr, as well as generate 
income through commercial licensing. Some photographers can receive a message, can expect to receive a message from Flickr's curators via Flickr mail that'll invite them to the program. If you don't, you can sign up to be considered as well. It's not yet clear what sort of licensing fees will be provided with Yahoo's program or if it be up to the individual photographer to negotiate. It sounds like they're looking for a new source of revenue for their users. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss Tech News today. If you did today, don't do it tomorrow. Tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. See you tomorrow, and thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.